I love combining my fat quarter stash with lots of strips for a super scrappy quilt. Even better is making a simple large quilt block, cutting it into smaller blocks for an amazing new quilt. I'm Leah Louise from Inspired Quilting by Leah Louise, and you're going to love this quilt. Let me show you how to make the quarter log cabin block. This is a quarter log cabin, and what we do is we start with a center square, and then we put three, four, or five rows of fabric. It's up to you. My choice is five. I love all the fabrics. I love all the colors, and the more interest, the better. So I start with my first square. I got a little carried away and I forgot to stop. <laughs> so I, I don't have a square with just the first round, but I did my, my round this way. And I like in the beginning around this square using different fabrics on each side, because if I just did a single fabric, um, I don't want the whole thing all the same. I want the layers to look different. Now this is the second round with two rows around the center. Then we want to get out to our third row. So I want to mix light colors with my dark colors. Some of the blocks start with a lighter inside and then go dark. And this started dark and then goes white. Now I do want all my center squares to be similarly colored and the same kind of intensity of color. So they're all either a dark um, purple or magenta, that dark color. And the reason I'm doing that is because we're going to add two more rows once we get here. Here's the block I showed you earlier. It has the center square with the first round of logs and one strip. This is the one I got carried away and I couldn't stop. So now I'm going to go ahead and continue. Okay, so I, I lay my piece on top. I, I always put my strip on top of the block. The block has been pre-sewn together, so it's pretty stable. It's less apt to stretch and be um, moved around by the presser feet unnecessarily. So I'm going to put this on top. If this were on the bottom, because it's just a loose piece of fabric, it's going to be pulled more quickly by the presser feet underneath here. And that's going to cause this to actually become a larger strip than it should be. And what'll happen is it'll wave a little bit, kind of waffle along. And that's going to give you more fabric than what you need. So if you put this strip on top, just like a board or anything like out, anything else like that, just keep this on the top and you're going to have much more accurate results. So I'm going to leave about a quarter inch between my two blocks and I'm going to run this down. Now here's a point that I want to show you. When I cut this off, see how that's a little bit angled? So I put my ruler and I line it up down here and I line this line right there. Now you can see how my line goes straight up this way, but the fabric goes that way. That's the reason why I leave that quarter inch of fabric between my pieces as I'm sewing. That allows for that little bit of variance. And that's going to occur naturally. Anytime you cut without a ruler, you're, you're not going to go perfectly straight. It just doesn't happen. So I lay this nice and straight and I align this with the edge of my block because I trim these blocks as I sew to make sure that they're square. So after each round, I sew them up, or excuse me, after each round, I press them nicely and then I trim around the edges just to make sure that they're square and that they're all even because getting them even is important for this quilt because we're going to then cross cut them into four pieces each. And then those are the pieces we're going to sew together for our final quilt. And if our blocks aren't all the same size, it can really wreak havoc in uh, putting your quilt together. And let me show you what this looks like. Oh my goodness. I absolutely love this. Let me open it out. I mean, I could make a quilt just out of this. Isn't that gorgeous? What you may notice here on row four, do you see the difference in size? These are all two and a half 
Everything so far in these first three rows are two and a half inches wide. But then I went to one and three quarters. So that'll give me a one and a quarter inch narrow strip. And then my final row will be a two and a half. I like doing that because it adds a lot of interest. The other thing is this allows me to add an accent strip and being a different size makes it stand out even more. The color will create the contrast. The size creates more of an accent. And I'm using these dark colors here and that's the same colorway that I'm using in this, this strip here. So I have my three and you can see there's pinks and orange and green and purple and there's just all kinds of colors in here. And I just went through and I created all these blocks. Now my next step, there we go. My, my next step is going to be to add the last two and a half inch row out here. I love how this all goes together. Now this can be hard to look at as it is in its entirety. But what we're going to do is we're going to come in and break this down into quarters. Then we're going to set them on point. And this is a stunning, stunning design. I am so excited to show you. Look at those sunflowers. Oh my gosh, I think that's one of my favorite. The sunflowers and the peonies. I love them. And you can see I put them in wherever I could find a way. Um, so there's lots of hearts. You know, it's sort of Valentine-ish, but not specific. And notice this, this dark um, outer edge, that's going to be the accent strip that's going to set everything apart. So that's what's going to happen next here. I'll put the accent strip on and then we'll do the final two and a half inch and we're good to go. So, so let me just show you a couple of these and then I'll get to the bottom of the pile and we'll do some cutting. So you can see that there's all kinds of colors mixed in. This quilt top is going to have over a hundred different fabrics that I used from fat quarters, um, actually predominantly fat quarters, and a lot of them are were stash fabrics that I had on hand as well as some that I recently purchased. So here we are. I want to show you how I cut this. You can do it in a number of different ways. I'm going to show you the way I do and explain why I do it this way. If we just cut down the center here and here, we may not get even corners. This is going to be our center corner. And this is what we're going to use as a setting point when we're putting our blocks together. So in other words, this is going to be pretty visible. So I want them all to be as evenly pieced as possible. I don't want to come in and let's say, you know, my seam allowance was off over here. And so one half of the block is bigger and the smaller is small and the uh, other side is smaller. I want them to be relatively even. So what I do is I come in and I know my center block should be at about four and a half inches. So I'll set my ruler at approximately two and a quarter and I bring in a second ruler. This way I can measure both sides to make sure that I'm even. So I use the large ruler and I set these lines along the logs, the, the lines from the seam sewing all the logs together. And that shows me that this is relatively straight. Now the other thing I'm going to do is line this up so it's at two, at, uh, two and a quarter from the center. And as long as I'm getting my two and a quarter on each side, then I'm good to go ahead and cut. And I'm going to start down here. Now this block almost measures 24. I think it's at 23 and a half inches. So it's kind of tough to cut on the mat and you need a, a good size ruler for this. Now I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to set this at two and a quarter and I'm going to line my ruler guides just to make sure that my block is not going to be skewed. And I'm going to go two and a quarter here and make sure that's two and a quarter. If it happens to be off, and let's say I get two and a quarter here, but I only get two and an eighth on this side, split the difference. Move them so they're equal on both sides. The two and a quarter is our goal. 
but if we have to adjust that a little bit, that's okay. It's going to be pretty minute, and it's just going to give you a better balanced quilt because these, for me, are a high contrast color. And this and this are primarily my accents, so they're going to stand out. So I want these to be relatively uniform. If you're not doing that in your quilt, then you don't have to worry about it at all. So Once all the large log cabin blocks are cut into quarters, we want to trim them down so they're all a uniform size. In measuring a few of my blocks, I can tell that 11 and a half is going to be about the common size all my blocks will end up at. So what I'm going to do is cut them, and I'll do the first one here with the square ruler. So I have this set at 11 and a half, actually just a bit too much, 11 and a half here and 11 and a half here. So this corner fabric is at the 11 and a half inch. So this right here is my 11 and a half. You see where I'm matching up those two ends. And then all I need to do is cut this outer strip. And once this strip is cut off, I have a beautifully cut 11 and a half inch square block. Now, alternatively, there's another way we can do this. There are always multiple ways to do just about anything in quilting. That's something that I have definitely found. So we just want to pick a point, and I just use a place where there's heavier lines so that they stand out and I can tell what I want to line up. What I can do here is I'm just going to hold this. You want to make sure nothing moves. So I'm going to set this at 11 and a half. So I'm going to cut this off and I'm going to do the same up here. So I'm just going to go through and trim all these and then we're going to get into laying out the quilt. It's a lot of fun. I know on point sounds daunting and I've done a couple others before. And what I'm going to do this time, instead of using the extra blocks to use as our setting triangles on the side of the quilt, we're just going to use plain fabric. I have some background fabric that I bought that I think is going to work perfectly. So let me get these cut up and then I'm going to show you how we'll cut those triangles to fill in these sides. And then we're going to lay out our quilt and it'll be together before you know it. Now when we are doing our quilts on point, what we do is we set our rows up like we normally would, except that around the edges, we don't line them up. When the quilt is put together, like I said, we offset it. Each row is offset by a block, so we leave a block out here. But now we have this empty triangle that we need to fill with something. It's a pretty background. It's a creamy white, so it goes along with a lot of the low volume fabrics that are in the quilt. And it has the pink and the dark pink, a rose color. It has a bit of uh, a turquoise blue as well as a, uh, a green in here. So there's a lot of colors that really work well together, and I think this will make a really good background. But I need to figure out what size I need to cut my blocks in order to create these triangles. If you like precision quilting, there are a number of calculation charts that you can follow to get exact dimensions and everything is going to just fit like a puzzle and there you go, no trimming. I prefer to cut my squares just a little bit bigger to give me that fudge factor so when I'm trimming along that I don't have to worry about something coming up just a little bit short because maybe my seam allowance is off or I didn't cut it straight, whatever the case may be. I am not a perfect quilter, I can guarantee you that, so I always allow a fudge factor to cover whatever may occur. So what I do is I need a square that is going to have an outside edge. So think of a square just like this and I need, I'm going to turn this inside out, I need this outside edge, this straight edge right here to fit along this open area along the side of my quilt. I'm going to get a big square like this and I'm going to cut it this way and this way. This gives me four triangles 
and this is going to be the outside edge here and here and here and here. So I'm going to go, I'm lining these up so they're in nice straight lines because if I skew these and don't get them straight, then that's not going to give me a very good dimension and I'm going to be creating more problems myself. But I want to know how long I need to cut a square, the edge of the square to go from here to here. So essentially, this is what I want. I want that dimension right here. So I'm going to put my ruler starting right here and go all the way to this corner. And I'm just shy of 17 inches. So when I cut my square, and in this case, it's 17 inches, I will cut it at 18 inches. You can even go 18 and a half, but generally an inch is plenty. And then I am going to cut it diagonally this way. So first I'll cut it diagonally that way, and then I'll cut it diagonally this way, and this is what I end up with. Obviously mine will be bigger because this is only a 11 and a half inch square and I need to use an 18 inch square, but this gives me my triangle and this is the outside edge of my square, so it's on the straight of the grain and I don't have to worry about the bias edge. These are the bias edges. They are going to be sewn up against each of these sides. So as I'm sewing my my quilt, I do this side, then I do this side, then I'm going to take one of these, it'll be cut to the appropriate size, and it's going to look more like, like this. I'm going to sew these straight across. This is going to be a bias, but that's okay. This is a good sturdy seam. There's nothing stretchy right here. It's on the straight of the grain. So when I sew this, I'm just going to pin it gently. I'm going to put the bias on top so that I can make sure I'm sewing it without this stretching. If I put it underneath, sometimes I'm afraid the uh, feed dogs will pull it apart, pull it in and, you know, make it wavy a bit. Um, I don't want it to stretch, but by doing it this way, I have my, my whole row is set up. I have my side setting triangle right here, and this is on the grain of the fabric. That's what we're doing. And that works really great. So what I'm going to do is cut some 18 inch squares. I need four half square triangles on each side. Um, I'll show you a picture of what the layout is before I do the triangles and, and set them in. But in the meantime, what I'm going to do is cut some background fabric. I'll get the squares going, and then I'm going to show you how we put this together. My quilt is laid out so I can see exactly what it will look like. And I want to point out to you where the triangles are going to go, particularly the side setting triangles. Those will be the large 18 inch that we're going to use. So you see each side has four triangles. So I'm going to need four triangles along each edge. So if I cut four large squares at 18 inches, each square will give me four. So by doing four squares, I get a total of 16 triangles. When you're doing an on-point quilt or anything with a diagonal pattern, doing stars, triangles, things like that, you need to keep in mind the direction of your fabric. Many quilting fabrics, the direction is, is not an important issue. These, however, though it's a very small print, you can see that these hearts do have a, a direction. So what I'm going to do is I put all my blocks with the hearts going in the same direction. I'm going to make sure I use these four on the top of my quilt, each of these on the sides, and this on the bottom. So around the quilt, all the hearts are going in the same direction. It's not that critical, but I think it might make me a little crazy if some of the quilts were this way, or excuse me, some of the hearts were this way and then that way. So I just want to um, take a little time and make it work in a way that's good for me. So that's those four. Now, let me just show you real quick on this particular block. As we're sewing along, we're going to take one of these triangles that we just cut and that is going to be placed right here next to 
the end of the row. So as we do our strip, our blocks to create the row, then what we have is this triangle and it's going to join up here. Now I always match up at the corner, make sure this is straight and I match it up here. I'm going to have extra up here, but remember I cut this a little bigger just so I didn't run short. So I'm okay with a bit of extra. That's not a problem. I'd rather trim than not have enough. Now the second thing we need to do is once our side triangles are all in place, we now have to, at the end of our row in the corners, cut a triangle that's going to go like this. So what we need is a triangle about this size. And again, there are lots and lots of uh, charts and calculations out there to help you figure that out. But let me show you what I find to be the easy way. What we're going to do is cut a square in half once diagonally. So it's that diagonal line that's going to go across this block. The diagonal line is the bias. The outer square edges are going to be the straight of the grain. They're going to hold their shape. The bias is prone to stretching. So we want to make sure that that is sewn and not on the outer edge of the quilt. Now, again, multiple ways, but one of the ways that I do it is I will take my block and put it on a 45 degree, let's see, right here, on a 45 degree line because I need to have a diagonal that goes from this corner to this corner. Now you can see we're going to go all the way from here to here. So if I cut a triangle this size, it's going to fit. Now the easy way to know what that is, is I'm just going to count up. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and a half inches. It's actually eight and a quarter, but I'm going to go to eight and a half. And I do need to add extra for my seam allowance. Because remember, on the corners, we have to have that little extra bit for the dog ear, the, the point of your triangle, to hang out. And that's generally about three quarters of an inch. I generally will add an inch. So the dimension is determined according to the finished size of your block. So like me, if you are measuring according to the unfinished size of your block, you have an extra half inch here anyways for that extra seam allowance. So what I do is I just measure this dimension. I count up here. It's at eight inches. I'm going to bump it up to nine and I'll be good. So that's what I'm going to do is cut some nine inch squares, which I happen to have right here. And these are going to be corners on the outer points of the quilt. And this is going to fit, and I want to show you how this works. There we go. See how when this square, which is nine, nine inches, I already have it pre-cut, is set in the center where these cross, cross section, they cross over each other. And I line each one on these diagonal lines. There we go. And I'm just going to cut here. Well, if I were going both ways, I would cut this direction. But for this, I only need to go one direction here. And because this is directional and I'm only cutting it one way, I'm going to get some kind of funny corners that may not match up with everything else. But I'm OK with that. I'm going to make that work because some of these go a little bit sideways. And I'm just going to let them match up to whatever is there and make it work. Okay, so now I have my corners. And so when I'm sewing this block, I'm going to take this corner right here and see we have plenty of room on each side for our seam allowance. And I'm going to sew that and then this is going to become the corner of my quilt. It's all wonderful. It works great. I love it. Don't let the math scare you. There, You don't have to do the math. There are ways you can just measure to make it work. And because I'm visual, I think that comes easy for me. So I want to show you just how to figure those things out. 
and a lot of times if you just put the basic drawing on a piece of paper and draw the piece that you need it's like oh okay that works and that's how I figure these things out and I always like doing it myself I don't have any problem looking at the charts and just see oh how different are my numbers and theirs and they usually fall in line pretty darn close I do tend to make mine just a little bit bigger but like I said, I just prefer that fudge factor. <laughs> it's just, just an assurance to me that I'm not going to uh, end up with any shortages. So let me go ahead and start putting these pieces together and show you how we're going to assemble this quilt. To begin assembling, I start in the corner, and that's with one single block. And then we're going to put a triangle on each side. Let me show you how that works. On this one, I have already attached the first triangle and the second one is pinned in place and I'll sew along here and you see now how I have this angle coming in and I need a corner. So this is where the little nine inch squares come in. When we cut those in half, that creates the corner. And so I'll line this up right here and fold it over with my seam allowance and everything lines up beautifully. And so we have our corner of the quilt, and you'll see now this is going diagonally in relation to the outer edges. So that's how we make an on-point quilt. Now to kind of jazz this up a little more, let me show you the next step. So this is a, sing a row with a single block. The next row will have three. So we always add two to the outer edges, and I'll show you how that works right here. So here's the center block. I always want to line the center blocks up, and then the others will go out to the edges. And I'm going to pull this up because I know it's hard to see all this. So here's my center block, and I'm going to sew this right here to that triangle and see how this is going to create my diagonal line here and do the same right here and I get that diagonal line. So by doing this, I'm going to try and bring it in so you can see it. You put these together and then here's your diagonal just like that and that's how you box your quilt in. And doing it on point is just a matter of adding these triangles onto the side to make the block go just a little bit, 45 degrees, so that it looks like a diamond instead of just a square. And it's a lot of fun and it looks beautiful and it's a great way to finish any kind of a patchwork quilt. Most all blocks are able to do this and look really good in that pattern. So there's kind of some fun ideas that you can think about, but let me go ahead and put more of this together and I'll show you how it looks. Here's the first corner assembly. You can see I have a single block here with a side setting triangle on each side, as well as a corner setting triangle. So with this single block and those three triangles, I create a pyramid, a larger triangle. And this is what creates the corner of my quilt. Then my second row will be these three blocks. So I line the centers up, one extra block on each side, and I add a side setting triangle on this end and a side setting triangle on this end. And that gives me this row, the second row, and when they're sewn together, these triangles and corners all come together and notice how it's forming a straight line. I do the same thing with the next row. I have my side setting triangle. I have five blocks. Again, the center square is lined up the entire way. And then I get my nice long straight edge. Here's a diagram of the quilt with all 41 blocks and you can see how it's laid out. This is the corner that we just did. This is the first block with a side setting triangle on each side and a corner. And this made our large triangle that becomes the corner of the quilt. This same corner is duplicated down over here. So it's just going to be 
a second piece done the same way on opposite corners. From here, we're going to work in rows. So we have a single block, then three blocks, five, seven, the nine block, which is our center strip, and then seven, five, three, and one. Each row has a pair of side setting triangles, one on each side, and that's what gives us the straight edge of the quilt. When we get to our center row, though, we use a corner on that strip on each end, and then we reverse the strips in order to get to our other corner. This gives you an overall picture of the assembly. I am working on a pattern. This is part of that pattern. I'm just not ready to let it go yet. There's, there's still some uh, instructions and photos that I want to take in order to make sure this is very clear before I include anything in a pattern. So this will give you an idea visually of how it goes together, what my next steps are, will be to combine these strips and I did show you on the design wall the corner with the three strip and the five strip so these pieces are already finished now I'm going to start assembling these rows so let's go ahead and take a look at that and here's the finished quilt top all pieced and ready to go I love how these blocks all work well together. The colors are, are wonderful. There's a lot of pink. The purple just creates a nice kind of a darker background almost. And then we have these light, low volume prints, which are fantastic and play off this outer, uh, what do I want to say, on point border. It all really works well together, but I really like these dark, strips in here. They set the blocks apart and really add a nice design. I like this a lot. There's a lot of pink in there. I'm glad I have the, the greens and the, the sort of coral colors, but the low volume I think worked in this better than I really expected. You saw the quilt draped behind me in the intro and I just took a close-up picture because I thought it would be fun to look at. And I just love how all these blocks work together and all these different prints. Oh, this is really a favorite of mine. I hope you enjoyed this quilt as much as I did. It turned out great and I'm really excited about it. I appreciate you following along. Thank you so much for being here. And I hope you have some great ideas now for a quilt of your own. Get your fat quarters, your scraps, your strips, and see what you can come up with. Have a wonderful rest of your day.